Discord. OK, so I've got another topic here about HTML and CSS and JavaScript uh, that I'm excited to talk about. And I think this same diagram, in a way, applies. But it applies in a different way. And I totally forgot to like prepare an example. But let's do one together. So over here, I'm, gonna, I'm actually just going to make a totally new uh, project. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to call it parent child. And uh, <laughs> I am a child, and I'm also a parent. That has nothing to do with this video, but it just popped into my head. My children are very entertaining. I do not, they are not DOM elements. It would be weird to have DOM element children. <laughs> Perhaps in the future, we will all have strange robotic DOM element children. That is not now. OK, I was saying something. So let's, let, me, um, <laughs> let me add uh, parent and child. Uh, I am a parent and a child. So I'm making a web page here <laughs> that has a header on it and a paragraph. And now I am going to do something. I am going to say create canvas 400 400 and here I'm going to say background 0 and ellipse you know 200 200 uh, random 100 uh, random 100 I don't know what I'm making here but it's the greatest sketch I have ever made and here it is So look <laughs> Here is a page. I made two elements in the HTML file, a header and a paragraph. And then I made this canvas in P5 that's animating. And what I really want desperately is I want the canvas to be in between those two things. Now, this is not a particularly interesting problem. But it is the essence of a problem, not really a problem, but a, 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 a thing that will happen to you in your life where you have this elaborate layout that you've figured out in HTML and CSS, and you want to insert DOM elements that you're making in JavaScript uh, into the elements. I feel I'm, I'm getting a little tired, so like doing a little bit of dancing, I think, helps. Um, you want to insert those elements into the page in a particular spot. Or, uh, and I've got actually a really great, um, I've got another, uh, uh, another example in mind, which I think I will do in this video, uh, that I think uh, will work well as well. But let's just start with just this particular problem. So if I come back to here, this is where what I'm saying. Like, you're calling create canvas in P5, and it makes this canvas element, which as it gets attached to the page, it's always appended to the HTML body, which means it appears at the end of all the things that might already be there. But what if you want to put it in here? So let you know, the way that this the, one a way of solving this particular problem is by uh, first reminding yourself about how an HTML page is structured. If you recall, you can think of an HTML page as this tree. The root of the tree is the HTML element. A child of that tree is the body element. Then perhaps the children of the body element or are paragraphs. And inside some of those paragraphs, there might be an image as well as an anchor link. You can think of this tree. So what you, I want to do is say, hmm, when I create this canvas, what if I could say attach it as a child to this particular paragraph? And that way it will appear in between these two paragraphs, right? This is P1, P2, P3, which might appear on the page like this. And if the canvas it becomes part of P2, it's going to be inside that paragraph, as opposed to just being here. And the way that you do that is with a function called parent. Now, how do you assign that this particular element as the parent of this canvas? Well, how do you refer to one specific element in an HTML page? By its, I just like going to do like ID, I feel like a pose. Like, you want to do it by the, um, I'm just, I'm like just acting silly for no reason today. But uh, that's, I, I guess, the, how I am every day. That's just what I do. <laughs> no reason for acting the way that I do. Uh, I was talking about something. The ID, right? If this, paragraph, if this paragraph is an ID, I can say, make the canvas the child of this element, this, the element with this particular ID. So let's go look at how you do that. And I'm going to do it in a sort of a strange way. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a particular, I'm going to add a new paragraph and I'm going to call it canvas P and this is, I'm going to say uh, this paragraph should include the canvas and I'm going to look at this now and you can see and I spelled should wrong, but you can see that paragraph is there and it has an ID, canvas P. So how do I re refer to it now? Well, if I say var canvas equals create canvas and I say canvas parent what? What do I say? What's the parent? The parent is canvas P. So remember, Canvas P is this particular element. I want the canvas not to appear at the end of the body, but inside that paragraph, which is in between the header and the H1 and the other paragraph. So now if I do that, you can see, look at that. This paragraph should include the canvas, and in fact it does, and now this is after. So this is how I take an element made in JavaScript and insert it into a particular place in that HTML page with the parent function. Now one thing you might notice here is, hmm, didn't we say at one point in our lives that when you refer to an ID, you need the pound symbol, right? The pound symbol, right, a, a tag is referred to as just the tag. A class is referred to as dot, the name of the class. And an ID is referred to as pound canvas P. Well, in fact, this will actually work also in P5, but here in this case, the pound is essentially assumed because the only thing, you can't say, make this element the child of these five other elements. I mean, that, that sort of works in the biological world in a certain ways. I don't know what I'm talking about, so I get into that. But in the, in the, in the DOM element, in the, in, the, in the DOM, an element can only have one parent. It can't have multiple, it can have grandparents, because an element could have a parent, and that element could have a parent, which is interesting and uh, sort of these like elements are nested, but if I'm inserting it, I need to know which element is its particular specific parent. And in that case, so the pound is assumed. So you can, you can put the pound in there if it makes you feel more comfortable with your life, but here it works, it's assumed. Okay, ah, so I had another idea for this, ah, which I think um, I will, let's, so th th this was the, you can stop watching now. This is like really where I should stop, it's a nice like, seven minute video, the child, by the way, the child function I could also, uh, I could also do by, um, by selecting the, par by, by selecting the paragraph and saying paragraph dot child can, the child function is just the inverse of that. I was doing so well until I started saying child, but you, you get the idea. Try it. That'll be your exercise. Ask questions in the comments. But I think I want to just like add one more example here, which I think would be a useful one. Let's make an example. Let's design a page. So this is what I want the page to look like. I want the page to have a, a list, a list of happy things. List of happy things. And I want to get one of those bulleted lists with items. And I want to have a button that whenever you click, it adds something to that list. So first there's a header. There and there's a button, and the list is in between those two things, but I need to make the elements that are going to go on the list in JavaScript because they won't be there in advance. So let's look at how I might do this. Let's make this example. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do save. We're just going to make this together. I mean, I'm sitting here by myself, but, uh, and that camera's probably going to turn off because I forgot to reset it before I started this video, but I'll fix that when that happens. Parent child two. So first let's design the page, and I'm going to say this page is a list of happy things, and then a, a particular kind of HTML element is called an unordered list, which is like a bulleted list. You could also make an ordered list, which would be a numbered list. Oh, heck, let's make an ordered list. And then uh, an element would be, uh, you know, a rainbow. That's a happy thing. And so now if I look at this page, you can see then there that is. Rainbow is the first element that appears. and the next element, uh, if I say unicorn, <laughs> uh, unicorn is the next thing that appears. You can see that these elements are sort of styled and numbered automatically. But I want this to be empty. Nothing's in there. And in, instead what I want is a button, uh, make a happy thing. Oops, that's not, that's the idea. Uh, button, make a happy thing. 
So now, and maybe I will, uh, now let's look at this. So look at this. Here is the page. There is, and um, let me just make this so you can see this better. Uh, here is the page, right? I want to, when I click on that button, I want to see new happy things get added to that list. And the list is a thing that I set up in HTML, but I want to add the contents in JavaScript. So first, what I'll do, I think, is let's just make an array, a happy array, rainbow. I can't take credit for the use of the word unicorn. Somebody said, you have rainbows, but no unicorns in your video. <laughs> so I was like, OK, fine, unicorns. Um, purple is something that makes me happy. It's, I really like the color purple. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I was going to say cheese, because I feel like cheese makes a lot of people happy, but I, I have like a lactose intolerance thing. Dark chocolate, I don't know. Uh, oatmeal, <laughs> this is like terrible. Uh, probiotics, I think feel like the bacteria, that's like a good thing. Bacteria is a good thing, it's a happy thing. Bacteria, all gotta like push our society forward and figure out how to fix our bacteria. I have problems with my bacteria. <laughs> I'm got this up on a really terrible tangent here. Rainbow, unicorn, purple, whatever, bacteria. So the point of what I'm saying is we don't need this canvas. Uh, I don't need the draw function. What I want to do is what? When, first of all, okay, so we can run, look at this. First thing I need to do is I need to get access to that button. How do I get access to that button? Select by ID. So I want a button. I want to access that button. Remember the button in the HTML page, I gave it the ID button, which means in my code, I can access it with the selection by pound button. Now I want to assign uh, a callback to when I press the button. So when I press the mouse on the buttons, assign the callback add item. Now I can say add item. And what do I want to make? Well, first of all, let's pick, a ra let's pick something from that uh, string of happy things. So I'll pick uh, a random number. Uh, between zero and the length of the array. I've mentioned this before in previous videos, but the random function gives you a, flow, a decimal number, but I need an index into that array, so the floor function deletes the decimal part, so 3.79 is just the value three. So what I want to do, is I could say something like create p and then happy index r. So here, I'm creating a paragraph element that'll just be on the page. So let's do that, make a happy thing. Whoa, just there's a lot of bacteria. That's terrifying. Uh, and you can see here, right, as I click, I'm getting all those happy things. But that's not what I wanted. I want to make list elements inside that list. So first of all, is there a list element, by the way, is the tag li. And, um, li is a list element. So I can actually use the generic create element and say li. So now I can make a list element from that with a piece of text from that array. And you can see those list elements are populating, but they're not actually inside that ordered list that I set up. I want them to be inside this empty HTML element. I want to parent them into that element. How do I do that? ID, oops, ID equals happy list. And then if I store that particular element in a variable and say li parent happy list. Now, as I make those elements, right, every time I click the button, they are going inside that particular ordered list. Now, I, I think I have some interaction design issues where the button keeps getting pushed down, which is kind of interesting. But you can see there's my list of happy things. I don't know what's going on anymore in life other than the fact that I, actually I should just made like videos about programming. Is that a happy thing? I think so. Um, so here you go. Uh, this is just another scenario I think that kind of shows you why you might want to use this idea of parent childing um, to be able to make DOM elements on the fly in JavaScript and insert them into various parts of your HTML file that have already been created with um, with the, uh, with the elements that are there. So I don't know, I'm really forcing, like trying to make these videos like uh, more interesting. <laughs> the camera's going on, it's shutting me down. It's like 
stop it with the rainbows and bacteria already. Um, so I would suggest to you create a scenario for yourself where you need this, design a page, maybe make a, a part of the page where images should get inserted or a part of a page where you should make sure you want to put the canvas or and when you like click on the canvas, it makes other elements on the page. Create a scenario for yourself like this. Uh, this really was my exercise for you was to like, and I kind of did the solution, but try doing something similar like this um, and see how it goes for you. And uh, I've got a couple more videos that I'm gonna make and I'll be closing out this section on the DOM. Uh,